Welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Kevin Jordan. I work for Los Angeles Unified, DACE, Division of Adult Career Education. Let me tell you a little bit about myself before we get started and, and get going. Um, I've really adopted this through Malcolm X. He said, education is a passport to the future for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. And I truly take that, that to heart. Um, but I have 16 years experience teaching adults, uh, anyway, anywhere between grades six to 12, as well as adults. I have a very strong 16 years teaching background, um, culturally diverse students, 16 years teaching adult single or multi-level ESL classes, five years teaching in citizenship with 100% success, success rate. In other words, all, the, all of my former students are now US citizens and are now voting. Uh, five years as a distance learning coordinator uh, through LAUSD. Two years as an integrated technology teacher advisor, ITTA. Uh, 10 plus years as a computer applications teacher. I firmly believe in, academic, in integrating academics into all of my lessons. And I have a successful experience in implementing educational philosophy, teaching methods, and, and approaches. And I've never had a class closed because of attendance. Um, and I'm consistently one of the highest student retention rates in every, every single school of which I've been employed. Um, I believe in using the cell phone. Um, but some of the fears, though, is the teachers lost control. And, you know, and, and honestly, that's actually one of the things that makes us fearful is we've somehow lost control. But, um, you know, yes, sometimes texting friends and family during class is not the best use of time, and I get it. But you know, you got to let it. <laughs> you got to get over that, because um, more students right now are using cell phones for learning and organizational. And being on the cell phone doesn't necessarily mean the students are quote off task. So, as fearful as we are, we still need to remember um, this is adult ed. So the way that I do it in my classrooms is I establish guidelines um, because I understand that working students may have a mandate that they need to keep their cell phone on even while they're in class. Parents may need to be available for calls related to children and you gotta, you have to accept that, but you just establish rules and guidelines. I say, I hate the word rules, but I establish guidelines that if you need to take a phone call, that's fine, but just go ahead and take it and take it on outside. Um, negotiate the rules and I want to emphasize this if we come in 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 adult education and say this is what we're going to do then we're imposing something on them and I think we need to look at, at agreed versus imposed guidelines some cell phone student um, usage examples are calendaring my students use it to calendar, if we're gonna have a quiz or something, they calendar it. Taking notes, um, use an app or function for class activities, such as right now in Zoom. Um, I haven't had any of my students audio record. Uh, actually, back up, I did. Um, one of my students had broke her right hand, and so she asked if she can record the, uh, re record the audio, so I did. Um, as many of our students, as, as you know, many of our students use a translator. Um, I, belittle, I believe in building a cohesiveness, and so therefore they, they are encouraged to contact each other and build a kind of a contact list. And this is also builds cohesiveness, because again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to build a community. Um, as you see, they, the students will use uh, the cell phone to you know, take a picture of the homework assignment or or work assignment or things like that as you're working. Um, share photos when it's related to class content, family vacation photos, this, that, and the other. And then what you do, you can use lessons with that um, photography that they've taken, um, designing lessons around that, or just basic web searches. So there's a lot of usages for a cell phone for the student, which hopefully that we know and agree to. Now, Teachers using it, um, I use my cell phone, such as Kahoot, uh, Burlington English. I also use it to 
um, access a, a LMS, my, my learning management system. And uh, with LAUSD, we use Schoology. I know Canvas is out there and there's a lot of other LMSs, but what I do with my LMS is I set a daily agenda on every single day. Um, and I will do it because I understand that not all of my students can come to class every single day. So therefore, I, I, I do hold them accountable. So in other words, if they, if they miss a class on a Wednesday, they're still accountable for what we did on class on Wednesday. But they also know how to go in and use the um, find the daily agenda, what we're doing every single day. So the daily agenda, literally, the one that's on the board that you post for students is literally mirrored on the learning management system. Um, I use it to send messages via Remind. Um, I monitor students via a program called Read Theory that I'm going to be talking about. But um, I've also, I use the cell phone in class. Um, I'll send messages to students as an ESL speaking quiz. And because if you're, you know, especially if you have a, let's say a two and a half hour class, in the evening and you're, and, you're try, and you're trying to get all of your testing in and you have a chapter test on a particular topic or, or such, and you have a, have a speaking quiz, then all of a sudden you're going to, you'll, you'll literally blow out the whole quiz because the way that I do it is on my LMS, the students have the quiz or chapter test. They'll have a listening portion on the learning management system that they take all online. And then I also give them the speaking quiz on Remind. And so I'll give them a question. They, they must respond to me using their, using their uh, cell phone on Remind. And, I, and I'll actually talk about that. You can set up QR codes and then let students go through like corners, act, corners activities where they go through and use a QR codes. And then they, they can, they can do, do web searches on the QR code. Um, alarms or timers. Um, I'll set up a timer on a speaking quiz, for example, or a speaking, um, you know, I'm having to do them like a, like a peer to peer speaking and I'll have them, uh, give them like three minutes as a back and forth, back and forth. And then the timer tells everybody to stop augmented reality, which is something I'm now exploring. Um, I take attendance. Through my through the cell phone on my um, we have a program called DASIS over at LAUSD, but I do take attendance a lot of times on my cell phone. That way, I don't have to um, go back to my desk, go back behind my computer, and in other words, essentially move away from my students. I can still, as students are doing board work or coursework or doing worksheets, this and the other, I, I can I can take attendance right then and there. Um, I can project topics from my phone via Bluetooth to an overhead projector, which is phenomenal. Um, sending an email. Also, this, uh, the cell phone usage, as you, many of you know, that you can send a quick text message. Um, for example, if you're stuck and you need to go to the restroom, <laughs> you, need a, you need a faculty member to come into your classroom, hold it, hold your classroom for five minutes while you, while you run to the restroom. Um, you use that as well. I believe that technology in the classroom encourages literacy and literacy I think is a big portion of what we need for our students to move forward, whether it be um, ESL, ABE, CTE, there's a literacy gap that we're still trying to close. Um, uh, our, our ESL students use, I, I encourage my students to send me messages via Remind. And I always respond to them. If they, make an, if they make a grammatical error, what I will do is I will respond to them, but I'll also give them the grammatical error correction so that they know how to do it the next time. Um, it'll also help your mainstream students, special needs, or at risk. And these are some of the programs that I use in my classroom. I use Remind, Kahoot, Burlington English, and also the, the program called Read Theory which again, which I'll talk about. And First Kevin, 20 minutes of class, I use my cell phone with my Kevin, students. 
I use it for Kahoot. For example, what I will do is I will set up a Kahoot quiz. I will send it out to be sent five minutes before the class starts. Because what I want to do is I want to set up a bell to bell schedule that my students know that at eight o'clock my, my class starts, actually five minutes before. Because remember, we're still trying, a lot of our times, we're still trying to prepare our students for the world of work. So if we're teaching them the world of work, you don't want them to be late. So five minutes before. So if they get to their, they, they move out of your program, they go on to the workforce, and they're, they're at, their, at their job five minutes before, guess what? They're never, they're never late. But if you, so you start teaching a bell to bell teaching for students and you start setting up guidelines and boundaries. And yes, I even do this during the lockdown is what we've got going on right now with our, with our students on Zoom. I will schedule a, a Zoom meeting with my students from let's say 10 to 11.30, but I will send them a quick um, Kahoot quiz and it'll be like five questions or so. It'll be set up um, to go to them at 9.55, for example. And then it's, and it's about a 10 minute quiz. And so when they start to come into the, into the Zoom, into the Zoom meeting, then they've already got their quizzes so that way we can actually talk about it. And so it, it's a nice um, blend to move on to, to, what, to whatever you're getting, you know, you're going into. Extended usage of Remind. I love this feature on Remind. Remind, if you click on the Remind application, and as if you're going to compose a message, there's a little button that when you're going to compose the message to your class, you've got camera, you can use the gallery, in other words, your pictures on your phone, or a voice clip, and I love the voice clip. The voice clip features, um, I send out for quizzes, um, messages with a personal touch, and then you can record an audio. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's about 10 to 15 seconds that you can re that you can record the audio, and then you can send it out as a attached message. Again, this is also how I do the in in, in ESL how I do the uh, speaking quizzes. Because I, because I know the best part, the students can respond using this technique as well. Once they get the message, they can respond back to you via the same, via the same way. They click on respond. They can click on the voice clip. They can click on the um, record button, attach it, and it'll come back to you as a message. And then what you can do as the instructor is you can grade their quote speaking quiz and you can give them give the student immediate feedback and i want to emphasize when you do this be sure that you to, that you set up the guidelines as to how the students are going to be graded on the on the speaking quiz don't just give it to them just open but if you give it to them as this is what this is what an a looks like or a b or a c or d or whatever you can give them a, the guidelines of what they're looking for, and then you can actually score them in accordance with your, um, you know, with your promotional test, for example. And you can do this on a chapter quiz. You can do this for just a regular quiz. Um, and this is a great response because, again, because of teaching ESL, many of our students are looking for ways to improve their, their pronunciation and their speaking ability because that's actually one of the biggest gripes of our students is a, a particular ESL is they don't do enough speaking. So during this time of the lockdown, we can still give them um, speaking quizzes. Kahoot, I love Kahoot. If you notice, I, what I've done on this, on talking about Kahoot, what I've done is I've actually upgraded to the premium version because it allows me to create my own. I, I look at Kahoot and I've looked at Kahoot um, and everything that I've seen from Kahoot are that I would even consider are from colloquialisms from other parts of the world 
that may not apply to my students. Um, Annika Hootquist, for example, if you, there's a little button where you can click on discover. If you click on discover, what it will do is you can type in, a, for example, adjectives, for example, and it'll give you adjectives, but it'll be a Kahoot quiz that somebody maybe from the United Kingdom created. And when the creator made that quiz, they referred to the, uh, to their, to the flat. Now, if I told my students a flat that you're going to, you know, name the best part of your flat or whatever, my students would not understand what I'm talking about. And I'm having to explain a flat versus and versus and apartment and I don't want to have to do that so I, my recommendation is Kahoot upgrade to the premium I understand right now during the lockdown if you go in through Kahoot you can your auction actually automatically upgraded to the premium version and you can actually make your in in your and you make your own highly recommended and I believe that's the way to go because it's designed your Kahoots are designed for how you want to teach your class. I, I just believe in making, making your own. Some other extended uses of Kahoot. What I do is on my LMS, I will post a, have a posting and I'll say, please post your Kahoot score here. <laughs> then the students take the Kahoot quiz, then they, then they post their score up on on the on the LMS again for us we use we use Schoology for Los Angeles Unified but they will use they'll put their score on Kahoot for my students I tell my students that some sometimes they are embarrassed about the score and I tell them look it's especially ESL it's not really about the score and I don't really I'm not really worried about the score I mean I kind of am but Everything else will take care of itself, but I, what I'm looking for is an ability for the students to communicate. And I believe the students to communicate is reading, writing, listening, speaking, and also digital communication. The ability for your ESL students to digitally communicate and post a score on an LMS is huge. Um, and this is gonna be another form of communications. So I believe in, in doing that um, and having your students post their scores. What I do is when they post their scores, good, bad, and different, I always like their, on, on the Schoology, there's a way to like the uh, posting, and I always like the posting. Again, I, I don't care if they got a 2,000 on a, on, a, on a Kahoot quiz. Or they got a 10,000. I like the 2,000 as well as the 10,000 because the idea, particularly ESL, I want my students to have an ability to post. And I think this is a, it's a digital literacy skill that our students need. Burlington. I love the Burlington application on the cell phone. Um, I believe I love their speaking ability. Uh, if you want to install the application, then you go to your site. <laughs> There's a way where you can click on vocabulary practice, and you click on the desired course. My students, because I'm teaching beginning high, what I do is I do uh, English in America beginners or everyday English too on the beginning on uh, on the Burlington English. The reason why, of course, is just because it fits. And then it'll come up with a screen that um, that'll have word lists. On the, on the cell phone, it does have a uh, feature that I really like that's designed for contrast and, um, and size of, of, of the text. So what I've done, this I have a, taken a screenshot of the student's Burlington English uh, cell phone. On the lower right-hand corner, when they go through the vocabulary practice, everyday English too, on the lower right-hand corner, it'll be, looks like an orange button. 
and it, it has three lines. If you click on that, the student will see um, things that they can do with the 25 words. They can match the sound, fill in the blank, match the translation. And again, it also has the, um, looks like the uh, uh, disabled uh, placard sticker that you can that you can use and what it'll do is you can if you click on it oops, you can click on it you can um, you can adjust the size or the contrast now in Burlington English on the teacher side I can mimic the student's phone which is wonderful because in the classroom I can use it um, for I like prepare for CASAs, virtual class scheduler. If you have a student that's having problems with the with the cell phone or with the Burlington application, you can actually, yeah, you know, I walk around, I carry my cell phone with me all the time. Um, like most of us do, you can um, you can work, you can literally work with the student hand in hand and show them with your cell phone uh, on how to how to how to use whatever you're trying to teach them, whether it be the readers or prepare for CASAs or the speaking portion. Um, virtual class scheduler. I love this feature that Burlington put, put in on the phone because what it does is it allows you to um, set up a Zoom conference. And um, then you can schedule online lessons via Zoom, WebEx, Microsoft Teams, uh, GoToMeeting, or Adobe Connect. Um, because of the Zoom with Los Angeles Unified, it's a, it's a, a correlation that Los Angeles Unified has, has with Zoom. I always, I'm using mine with Zoom now with my students. Again, this is the feature that I was talking about. The arrow points to the little uh, disabled uh, placard, if you will, and allows you to adjust contrast or a larger text. And I love that feature. Read Theory. This is my go-to, great for reading. This is a web-based program, no applications necessary. This is a phenomenal program. It teaches how to students to read and think critically. Um, Again, being in my 16th year, one of the things I've always been uh, looking at after probably about my second or the third year teaching is teach, teaching my students how to think critically. Um, I want to teach them not to just try to get the answer one time and be happy. I want them to teach, use, think critically in order to to advance and grow their 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 learning capabilities, uh, read theory is another great first twenty minutes of classroom thing that you can do with your students. <clears throat> Again, it's web based. It's easy to log in for the student. The students and the teachers can track progress, so the student can track their own progress. It also can be done on the phone very easily, and you so you don't. You don't have to check out the laptop cart. You don't have to check out the iPad cart. You don't have to go to the computer lab. You can do it on their phone. And this is phenomenal because most of our students have carry, carry the uh, cell phone with us. We've done a, Los Angeles Unified every year does a survey, does a technology survey that states in the most recent findings was that 92 percent of all of our students in Los Angeles Unified in the adult education program, 92 percent of all of our students have a smartphone. So I started looking at that and breaking it down and so out of a class of 25 you've got 22, out of a class of 25 you've got 22 students that have a smartphone. That is huge. So, I mean, yes, you need to address those other three, and I get it, but, it, but we're closing the gap, and the gap is closing dramatically. So, 
students want people want to know about read theory and 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 honestly i wish i was really smart but i don't think i'm not i don't think i really am but what i what i am is i listen and i talk to teachers i talk to other teachers i talk to because i teach a level two beginning high i talk to the level six teacher i talk to the to the reading class teacher and i ask them what can i do in level two to help my help my students prepare for your class so not only am i trying to get my students out of out of my out of the level two onto the level three i'm looking at moving them all the way through to the level six uh, program in los angeles unified we have what they call the tabe test t-a-b-e the tabe test and it is a reading test that the students have to take and they must it's a uh, 25 questions 25 minutes and 50 and 50 paragraphs test that a lot of students do not pass the first time around and they need to read at the ninth grade reading level so this program it's a web again web web based there's no applications necessary it goes from k-12 all the way to adult education abe um, read theory serves all of them it's also per perfect for reinforcing english as a second language as for CTE, um, it doesn't, CTE has technical writing and technical reading, and I understand that. You can use it in a CTE class, um, but it's a different kind of reading. But what it will do is it will teach your students how to think critically, which you need to be able to, in a CTE class, <coughs> you need, the students need to, to be able to think critically to be successful in that um, in that CTE class. So tell me a little bit more. Well, the growing database fits every level of reading. It guarantees that the student will never get bored. It have, has enough text for year-round reading comprehension practice and including home practice. Again, because it is web-based. They can take quizzes or give written response to passages. So in, for example, in level two, I want them to read and then take a quiz. Um, I've talked to level four, five, and six teachers, ESL, as well as reading teachers, and they have the students do the, do the written responses to passages. So it's adaptive to your student based on your level. Um, again, it's a, I cannot say enough good things about this. It gives Lexile levels. It gives reading levels and then you can track it. it uh, it's adaptive and it caters to the individual's needs. So what in read theory, what the student does is they log in, they have to take roughly 10, I think it's 10 quizzes. At the end of the 10 quizzes, then what it'll do is it'll place them in the appropriate level, wherever they are, Lexile level, reading level, grade level, et cetera. And it'll build on that. So if you're teaching a, even a level one class, level one ESL, the student can log in, take the quiz, take the 10 quizzes, and then let's say they're reading at the first grade level. Well, the, the, the first quiz that they take will be at the third grade level. Every, every quiz starts at the third grade level. And then as each quiz is either they do well or poorly on that quiz, then it'll either go up or down for the student. So the the second quiz if they do poorly on the first quiz this the second quiz will go to the second grade level then the first grade level then the second grade level the third grade level so on and so forth and then you can track the student's growth over time um, i always challenge and this is something that i challenge my students with is there there's i understand that you can do 999 quizzes but i always challenge my students <coughs> To, um, to do the 999 and then take one more and then tell me what happens. Um, it is kind of a, it's, it's, it's a fun challenge. I don't know what happens when you reach number 1000. I don't know. And so I want them to do the 999 and then take, take one more. But here's my thinking. I mean, yes, it's fun. Yes, I can have the students do that, but when they, but uh, but now I've given them a goal to do 999 quizzes and take the one more and then come back to me and tell me. 
And then of course that in, keeps that student involved, engaged, and moving forward on the program. Is it easy to use? Oh yes, easy peasy lemon squeezy. You can create an account and it's easy, and you can add students as easy as one, two, three, you, as well as students can use it on a cell phone. If you don't feel comfortable with technology, but would still like to use Read Theory, reach out to their support team. They have a very responsive support team. It usually, well, I haven't tried to use the support team during the lockdown um, because of everything going online. But prior to this, if I needed to respond to them, if I send an email in the morning, for example, I'll have a response from the, from the Read Theory support team in, in the afternoon. Um, so there's really rapid response. So if I have a question with a student on a student account, let's say at nine o'clock in the morning, give me a quick email on the support team by two, three o'clock in the afternoon, I'll actually have the response. And so then the next morning I can go in and I can tell the student as to what's going on. Or what I do is once I get that, get that question answered, what I will do, I, I will send a message via remind on my cell phone. Um, to let them know as to what's going on because it's the idea that that I keep my students engaged at all times in my class. I believe, I full heart, wholeheartedly believe that it's a 24-7. Again, tracking progress? Absolutely. The student can and you can. Um, you, can you can easily identify struggling students and also high performers. This will also allow you as they instructor that if you want to do pairing for example you're doing a let's say you're teaching ESL and you're doing a speaking practice what you can do is you can take you can you can now identify your high level readers and you can pair them accordingly uh, you can have Karina with uh, Janet or Jeanette and you can have them do a do a speaking practice because you know that their reading level is very, very similar on based on what you see on, on read theory. So this is, there's a lot of back channel that you can use um, to, to help and work with students. Um, you can analyze performance on the individual level and the class. All texts are accurately um, aligned to grade level standards and a Lexile me measure, measure is provided for each. Now, many years ago, I taught, uh, I taught a reading program in the K-12, um, and, and it was all about Lexiles. And students, they had to pick books and online um, material based on their uh, Lexile level, like their little scale. But you can, you can pass this on. Now, you can also trust the student performance matrix and, and metrics and the reading level. Now, the thing that I use with my students is, hang on, I'll go back. The thing I use with my students is when we're working on the Lexile levels and, and going from, let's say, level two into level three on an ESL classroom, for example, or they're promoting from four to five or five to six, pass the um, codes, get, have the students on, then what you do is, is it, I don't know if you're like me, but what I've done is I will work with the level, level three teacher the day before the, the last day of class. What I will do is I will bring my class over to him, and then what he will do is he will, um, he will have my class, and then I'll work with students and my students and their students to have everybody transfer from my class to his class by adding the, um, the class code. Uh, there's a class code that what you can do is you can transfer back and forth and so that the student does not have to start over. And I don't believe that the student wants to start over. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want a student to have to start over and create a brand new account and all this kind of thing. Let them just keep going uh, because when you've also, with read theory, when you go from one level to the next level, for example, ESL, uh, what you're able to do is you're actually able to give the, 
the new teacher, let's say a three or a four or five, they're like the next level up teacher, you're actually able to give that teacher something to look at and so that they understand more about your students, each and every one of your students as they're walking in the door. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna cut down the time of that next level teacher to, um, to, so that he or she does not have to analyze your students and figure out where they are on the reading level, the, the, the speaking level, or the, the, the reading level, the writing level, et cetera. They have all that information and all that data on. So I highly recommend if you use Read Theory to get the next level up teacher or the next promotional level teacher or you know, whoever they're gonna go to or work with, uh, collaborate with that person and let them uh, also get involved on this program. I, this is a wonderful, wonderful program because I believe in, in a nice, my idea, my ideal is you, when they go from my class to the next level, you want a very easy handoff. I'm gonna give you one more tech tip. Because you all are busy, you are a busy teacher. There's a program called CC Cleaner. Um, get that for your phone. Because what it'll do is it'll help clean your cache memory. Uh, keep your phone running smoothly. There's a free version and a paid version. And I've got the free version. And I put up a picture of what it looks like. There's a scheduler, there's a booster where you can boost your, boost your performance of your phone. An advisor, like an app advisor, if you have apps on your phone that are, that are idle, it'll actually tell you. There's an app manager, you can hibernate. Photo optimizer, if you have some photos on your phone that are not as, uh, that, are, that are not, you have duplications on phone, it'll actually help you to eliminate, delete. It'll optimize the memory on your phone. You can analyze your storage. Cloud transfers, um, that cloud transfers system info, uh, I believe is on the paid version, but what I use is the scheduler, the booster, the advisor, and the app manager and the, and the photo advisor. I use a free version. I, I don't have to pay for it. I, I, don't, I don't wanna pay for it unless, unless I absolutely have to. But that's your tech tip for the day. Uh, Melinda, I'm gonna let you take it away. Okay. Kevin, we have a few questions in the, uh, the Q&A here. So I'm going to start up here. Um, if Remind only lets you record 10 to 15 seconds, how do you put a full quiz on it? And let's start with, do you put a full quiz on it? With Remind, what I do is I don't put an actual full quiz. And what I will do is I will put one question on per time. And um, I'll have like three questions. And what I will do is I'll send them out a quiz, have them respond. I'll send them out another quiz, have them respond. I mean, yes, you are gonna have a series of questions, but particularly for um, the chapter tests, what I'll do is I'll put one, two, maybe three questions, and that's it um, on, your, on your chapter quiz. Because the chapter quizzes, uh, we use a, the book uh, side by side and side by side has some questions. They have a series of like five or 10 questions. I'll literally, what I will do is I will, I don't wanna have all, have all 10 questions. I wanna pick two or three. Two, two or three or four of the best ones, the ones that align with the, uh, with the promotional test the best. Okay. How do you use Kahoot in remote teaching? How do I use Kahoot with remote teaching is I, I create my own quizzes. I send them out uh, to my students. And then what I will have them do, they take the quiz, then they have to put their scores on the learning management system. Okay. Do you ever have students that do not have a phone? I have not had one that's not had a phone. Actually, back up. I did have one student that had one phone that, was, that he was having problems with it but it's a case by case basis and it's so it it happens yes but it's very rare here's what i've learned <coughs> that if you have um, through the state of california as i understand it if you have an adult student um, adult 
that has a small child, they can get, be given a phone by the state of California. And generally that phone is a, is a uh, Android. It's a Samsung, for example, like the latest is the 10 plus, they might get the Samsung 7 Android phone for free because it's designed for the, the parent so that he or she can have access to making a phone call in the event of a 911 emergency. So most students will have a phone of some sort. Um, it's just a case by case basis though. Okay. Does read theory have a listening component or is there only reading and quizzes? Read theory is only reading. It does not have a listening component. It's all just, it's all a reading component. Um, and I, and I look at the, the listening component. I look at uh, Burlington English. They have the, have the Burlington English readers. Um, I will do other listening exercises. Um, I'm actually starting to explore a couple other programs, but, um, but, Burlington English, the, the readers, is phenomenal for the, for the listening exercise. There were a couple of um, uh, chats and Q&As regarding Burlington English. Is that a free tool or a pay tool? How much does it cost? And if it is a pay tool, and do they have anything free going on during this time? Uh, Burlington English is done through Los Angeles Unified. I would talk to your administrator. <laughs> start asking your administrator about Burlington English. Um, do they have anything that's free right now? Um, I'm not for sure. I do know they have a lot of free webinars right now that you can sign up and you can use the webinars for free. I know you go to burlingtonenglish.com um, and then I would say explore it as to if they have anything free right now. Don't know. Um, that'd be a Burlington English question, but I would talk to your administrator to ask about Burlington English. Um, they, they have their, their support has been phenomenal. Um, we have a dedicated, Los Angeles Unified has a, a gentleman by the name of Matt Huffine here in, here in Los Angeles, and he's des ded he is dedicated to um, Los Angeles Unified for us. Um, and he has just been phenomenal. If you send him an email, or text message, he goes through, he does a lot of webinars, uh, but Burlington English is a, is a district program. It's not an individual class. Okie doke. Um, what do you need, back to uh, Read Theory, what do you need to add students? Email, cell number, how do you do that? The way that I do it, um, I actually have, it'll be on the OTAN website. There is a how-to uh, for Read Cool. Uh, and is there is a cell phone number really? Um, you you there is a you will need like a backup email address, just in the event that the that that this if for example if the student loses their loses their login information, um, they can they can recover it without sending you a remind. But the way that I do it, because I have such an open communication and I believe my classroom is 24 seven for my students. If a student sends me a message, let's say on a Saturday morning at, let's say eight o'clock on a morning, Saturday morning, but it's an evening class, Monday through Thursday, something like that. You know what, I'll go ahead and, and respond because my idea, especially during this time is that if I, if I have my students involved in my classroom on a Saturday morning, that's awesome. <laughs> that's wonderful. That tells me that my students are involved in my classroom. And then therefore, it's going to help your student re-attention re, re rate. So if they send me a message on a Saturday morning on Remind, absolutely. But the answer to your question, I actually have the, a how-to on uh, Read Theory that will be on the OTAN website. Okay. Uh, we've got a lot of questions about the CC cleaner and you've still got the screen up there. Is that specific to Android or can it be uh, downloaded and installed on iPhone? As I understand, there's a CC cleaner for iPhone as well. Um, I do have an Android. Do you know the so publisher? Um, I've got it. I also have CC cleaner on my uh, laptops. Okay. Do you know the publisher? 
Uh, I don't know the publisher. Might... Okay. I apologize. I no problem. Uh, I was uh, there's a there's a, a Stanley Arias, our uh, ITST, uh, Internet Technology Service Technician, introduced me to CC Cleaner, and and I've been I've been a fan since. And it, and it looks like Stanley just um, typed in the chat. It's by Piriform, P I R I F O R M for the. Uh, so for the iPhone users, um, look it up by publisher if you're not finding it just by uh, typing in CC Cleaner. Uh, Kevin, I think, oh, we have um, the CASAS NRS level Lexile correlations. Jill, you typed that in, and I'm not sure which app you were referring to. Could have been Read Theory. Would have been Read Theory because Read Theory is uh, based on Lexiles and uh grade levels and i hope i'm thinking that answers the question <laughs> okay um cleaner 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 i'm looking through i think kevin i think that answers the questions um if anybody has anything more they can certainly put it in the q a or can i um, add one more success absolutely for everybody sure. um uh, on uh read theory I had one of my students, and this is a huge success story for me. I had one of my students that um, for LAUSD, she was in level 2B, trying to go to level 3. Her writing met, met the standard to go to level 3. Her speaking was spot on. She was ready for level 3. Her listening skill was, was great. She did very well. She passed all the listening tests and such for level three, but her reading level was very, very low. And so I talked to the level three teacher um, because I'm a big collaborator, collaborator. I believe in open communication between me and the next level teacher. So what I did was I talked to her and said, hey, this is where she is on the reading level. She had like a 210 on the CASAS score. Um, and she, we needed like a 216 reading level. And so I said to her, I, I told my student that I'm going to hold her back on this, on on for this trimester, because I need her to get her reading level up. Because her reading level is not ready for level three. So this is really my first um, dive in, you know, dive in the pool, and here we go um, on read theory. And I told her I said, here's what I want you to do. I need you to do anytime, anywhere that you have five minutes pull out your phone. I want you on read theory. If you have a question, I want you to send me a text message on, on remind, but I need you to do quizzes on read theory. Well, um, 225, 230 quizzes later, um, at the end of the next trimester, she hit a 216 on the CASAS reading level and she passed on the reading level and therefore I was able to promote her to, to level three. So, um, it is a lot of work for the student, but it will help, and it raised her CASA score from 210 to 216. Okay, and I have um, Mariano uh, Rodriguez also mentions esl-lab.com um, is also a great site. It has free listening and reading activities for ESL students. Oh, okay. So there we go. Um, what if some of your students are not on your LMS and may never be? Do you just use or do you do everything with them in Remind? No, all of my students are on are on are on uh, on, on the LMS. There's okay. there there there's no option. See, because Los Angeles Unified has has um, adult education email addresses. I put my students on the um, on the on the LMS via their their school email address because Los Angeles Unified uses uses Schoology on the LMS. Um, and my students are on 100% are on the LMS. If they're going to be in my classroom, they're going to be in, in my, well, before the lockdown, if they're going to be in my seat, they're going to be on the LMS, period. And, okay. and there's there's really, really, really no option because I will help them to get on the program if they don't have the students that are still learning how to navigate the cell phone, 
um, I'll have them on a, um, a Chromebook or have them on an iPad, but I will, they will be on the LMS uh, in the event that those same students at home, what I do is I will, uh, I'll have a Zoom class, then I'll take that PDF document and I'll send it out, send the document out to the student via Remind. But, uh, but bottom line is when they take their, uh, take their chapter tests, and I've been actually, this is now the second or the third year that I've done this. When they take a chapter test, they take the chapter test on the, uh, on the LMS. So that way I have a graded score because the way I look at it is I have on, on, in, in the ESL, um, if I have a student that's borderline, but they do, but they're doing, um, but they're doing, but they're, but their scores, but all of our chapter, chapter quizzes are high scores. In other words, 85%, 80, 85%, basically a B or A or a B um, on the chapter quiz, but they're borderline on the promotional test, then it gives me an opportunity to take that information, take that, take that data, take that information. I will take that over to the next level teacher and say, hey, look, I'm looking at Susana Gomez, for example, and she's borderline on the, on the, on the promotional test, but her scores on the LMS um, chapter quizzes are very, very high. So now what, what would you like for me to do? Would you like me to go ahead and send her on or should I hold her back? On the converse side, if I have a student that's borderline on the promotional test, but does very low, uh, very low score on the, on the LMS quizzes, chapter tests, et cetera, I'm not gonna send them. I'm not even gonna entertain to take that student to the next level teacher. So I use those, those LMS tests and quizzes for promotion and and this is this is good for that borderline for those borderline students okay um to address because there's there's quite a few people that uh, unfortunately don't have the, the perks that LAUSD does and they don't have LMS and they don't have district emails so folks we haven't forgotten about you um, there are a lot of other options that you can connect to your students still using the tools that that Kevin showed you. And um, Anthony, I'm gonna have you come on and um, I believe we have a cell phone guide from West Contra Costa that is now available on the OTAN site. And this might help some of you teachers along with, and Anthony, give me one sec here. There are a lot of different platforms that you don't need an LMS. You could use Padlet, you could use Google Sites, which you could use, um, there's so many tools out there that OTAN has been trying to get as many of these webinars out there to you um, so you can look at them and decide which one you want to use. Uh, um, just watch the webinars, watch um, or ask us directly using support at OTAN.us and we'll send you in all kinds of different directions. And Anthony, I'm going to let you uh, take it over from here. We're going to do the housekeeping and, and close the meeting after that.